Heavenly Father, um, thank you so much for this gathering of unique artistic souls here in this Zoom room. What a gift it is to know each other, to learn from each other, to uh, miraculously be together in this one uh, digital space from so many different parts of your earth. I pray that you would just would bless this time, that um, you would open up our our minds and our hearts to learn from what Christy has to share and also from, from one another. I pray that you would um, put grace and peace on our tongues and um, that we would walk away from this with a spirit of encouragement and knowledge of your love for each of us and for the act of creativity in our lives. Mm. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So uh, we are so grateful to have Christy with us. Christy has been a part of the Imago Day meetings from time to time, but we actually met uh, years ago in Wheaton, Illinois, and I was, I've been encouraged by her for many years in the way that she has used her community and the church and art to draw people together. Um, and so that has really grown and expanded over the years. Um, and so I invited Christy just to come and share with us some of the things that she's learned. And Christy is a very invitational person and it's eager to get feedback from you all. So, so our desire for this meeting is to really have conversation with one another and um, open up and share ideas. So welcome, Christy. Well, thank you. And greetings from sunny Colorado. It's beautiful out here. We've been able to spend uh, the winters out here. I have um, five children. Two of them are um, situated in Denver. I'm up in the mountains. They come up and visit us and ski because they like to ski. So it's we've kind of put ourselves in the place of being there for our kids, but we, we like to ski as well. So we've had some really, we've had a big dump of snow. So, um, it's been really fun, but, um, it's so good to see all of you and thank you all for even being here. All I can do is just share what the Lord has been leading me and doing, um, in my life. And I just would love to hear your input and, because I love hearing your stories and, um, and I'm kind of at, not at a crossroads, but at another point in the journey. And I'd really like to hear, hear your input. So, so anyway, I'd like to start by the purpose of the maker space, which is the community art group that, um, we started in 2013. And it's simply just a place where, we try to help people be with God and learn to hear his voice using art as a tool, um, encouraging creativity and people help them flourish and help their communities flourish. But you guys, all of you, I, I don't, I say you guys, I'm from St. Louis. Um, you already know what it's like to hear God's voice. And it's so amazing to hear your stories and how he's leading you in your work and what he is helping you create to give a voice and helping your communities flourish. But I, I asked myself, what would it be like if we could use art to help people slow down and teach them how to listen to God's voice and to hear his voice and to, and to understand what that sounds like. So you are all aware of that. And, and on that same journey with me, that's how it started with me as well. Um, starting with a study of worship and who are we worshiping? What makes acceptable worship? And what if we could bring that to general people, not just artists? And help them to slow down. We've just got a, we're in a society where there's so many distractions and um, God is always speaking to us, but we're not slowing down enough to hear him and listen. So that's what we've been doing in Makerspace. And he wants to meet with us and he is meeting with these people that we've been doing, doing the work. Um, we use brain science exercise, all the new brain science that's come out in the 90s. 
uh, to help people go from their left brain into their right brain and breath prayer to slow them down. And then using art as like a, a, a new medium, something new that they've never done before helps them to focus on God and not on their background and or just what they bring into the space. Um, we, we give them that space. It's a, it's a gift. Um, if they do come, it's a gift just to be with God. So it's quiet. It's not a social time. What is not is, um, not a sit and sip. It's not an art lesson. I'm not an art teacher. Um, but it's just a gift of time that they can meet with their maker. And so we try to create that environment. So a community art group, this is a community art group. It's not a new concept. And I know you probably are involved in a lot of other community art groups, but I think that um, it's new if it's connected to the church or within the church. And that's my, my premise today is what would it look like if every body of believers had a creative group that... Um, they could invite people in through that avenue, through that door. So the the three people, three types of people that um, we kind of target, it's actually all people. It's not just artists. It started out as an artist group, um, but it's really for all people to come and to find out that they are creative. How many times have you heard someone like one of your friends or somebody you're teaching that says, oh, I'm not creative. Um, we're trying to dispel that, that thought or that thought process because somewhere in their background, someone has told them that, that they're not creative. And it's just simply not true because we're all, as you know, we're all made by a very creative creator. And so just to give people time to be with their creator and to realize that they are creative, not just in the sense of making art, although you could probably argue that everything that we do makes art or we were put here to pursue beauty, which is God. God is beauty. Um, and we've had many talks on that. Natalie's and Chuck have, have done that. But what if um, they were able to see their creativity in everything that they do, whether they're an architect or an engineer or a chef or a homeschooler or just bringing creativity makes them flourish, their families flourish, and their communities flourish. So that's the first group of people is, is basically everybody. But then the second group of people are those that have already established that they are creatives and they don't feel like they fit. They don't, they, because creatives are different. We're all different, aren't we? And we, we know where to channel that. Um, but there's a lot of people that are unsaved or lost or don't know that their creati creativity comes from God and they're baffled by how different they are and they feel left out. They, they don't feel like they fit. And they, and there's a lot of creatives that definitely feel like they don't fit in the church. And, and a lot of that is, is history and maybe, and how the church has made them feel, but this is a place where creatives can come. And maybe you even people in our group have neighbors that are very creative, but they would never set foot into a church. So we use the church space. Um, it is under the church, but we don't preach the church. Uh, so it might be the only time that people walk into the doors of the church because the space is already there. They've allowed us to use it. Um, and it, it's a place where they're surrounded by God. They're surrounded by people who believe in God and in a very nurturing and welcoming and hospitable place. So that's the second group of people are the creatives that know they're creative, but possibly haven't found their way um, to God or into the church. And then the third group are the, the, is the people that do know they're creatives 
and know God as well and know that that is their purpose, which is which would include all of you. I'm, you know that your purpose is to um, bring glory to God through your talents, through your your creative abilities. And that's pretty much the group that we started out with in 2013. And what's happened is that group of artists who know that they can enhance worship in a community, um, in a community of believers, uh, has spun off. And so it's it has become its own group in, a, in our church. Um, it's called the Tribe of Dan. And that group meets at different times than the makerspace, but they do come to the makerspace now and, and continuing to. But that's the group that is in included in enhancing the worship service through the visual arts, um, perhaps doing an exhibition on a sermon series. Um, and second of all, trying to figure out what God is asking them to do in the community. Maybe like, for instance, being involved in a community art walk that we had in our, in our city. Um, and also diff just different ways that God is putting on their hearts. This is the this is the group that we that we draw on to help the community flourish and bring the gospel into the community with their talent and with their arts. So does that all make sense? So those are so those are the three um stages of people. And um Christy, can I ask yeah. a question? Yes, yes, please do. <laughs> I'm loving every word. Thank you. What does tribe of Dan mean? Well, it came from um, how how I started in my study of worship, going back into the ancients and and what was attracting me were the visual arts and the building of the temple. And God set aside um, two people in in Moses's time uh, to build the temple. And they were from the two people, and I, one starts with a B and one starts with a, an O. <laughs> Bezal Bez Bezalel yeah. and, and Ohiliad. Uh -huh. yeah. And they were from the tribe of Dan. And ah. I didn't coin that um, that phrase. That was from another book that I have had gleaned during the time of my study. Um, and it was that that um, group is a in a Lutheran church that was doing that is doing um, amazing altars, bringing scripture alive through the presentation or the art um, on the altar. And that that's an amazing group. But um, through that study, as you all know, um, that artists have been on the forefront of culture. And in Moses's time, they were outside the camp and they were they were the prophets. They they were helping the community, Moses's community, understand what was to come and to explain their culture. And, and that's we've had many talks on that and, and how artists are on that. Makoto Fujimuro speaks on this too, is being on that border, on the borderline of culture and and belief and, and God and trying to help culture understand what's coming or what is what is happening, right? What is what is happening? And and you do that through your art when the Lord is putting on your heart of what to create. And when people see that, they're able to make sense out of that culture. And and so that's um when we first started in 2013, I was trying to find other the lord was putting this on my heart i should start with that first in this study of worship um i was attracted to the visual arts and how the visual arts enhance our worship as a community and going to different conferences and and sitting under different teachers and and trying to figure all that out um uh now i'm getting lost um it 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 spoke to me. The Lord was saying, "Start a community art group. Start an art group. Start one in your church." And I'm the least likely person to to do that. I and but yet, 
as all of you probably know with God speaking in your vo in your life, um, I wasn't able to let it go. And, and I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know what it was going to look like. So I started researching and trying to see what was available in our community, what kind of art groups were in our community. And as you know, I mean, I think back in 2013, there weren't even groups like this going on. There weren't a lot of, well, Zoom exploded during pandemic, right? So there weren't a lot of um, virtual art groups for sure, but I was looking for in-person art groups. And I know they've, ex I know they've existed, but um, nothing that like this, that would be connected to the church. So I had to just pretty much put my foot into the Jordan and hope that <laughs> the Jordan stopped and I was able to walk across. So, so how I started then was just to gather the artists that I had identified in our community of believers to meet and to start meeting and brainstorming. And I had never been in a in a creative business meeting before. It's so different than a business meeting, but a creative group of artists to get together and plan out something that we didn't know what was gonna look like and didn't know how to even organize it was thrilling, but also chaotic, <laughs> um, but exciting. So that, like I said, that we, we, we started out by bringing in guest artists, um, doing different creative processes, all the, all the different mediums, drama, writing, painting, um, and how it has evolved. The piece that we were missing was the listening, teaching listening prayer is basic. So how we have evolved over 11 years is, and this has been, this is why I need your input is um, I'm taking this this year really reflecting on what are the essentials of doing a maker space and is it um, able to be replicated? I was asked by a woman here in Vail, Colorado, um, who is a graphic designer and an artist to start a community group in their church. So it's forced me to, to reflect and say, how this has evolved, um, what what are what are the essentials of what it what it looks like now? And um, can this can this be done? And and that's my dream is wouldn't it be wonderful if every body of believers had a creative group? I call it community art group because I didn't have any other name to call it. I didn't know what to call it. And I think it served it well because it does reach out into the community, but it also draws from the community. So it's not just the church, which I think alienates some people and it keeps it open. And like Natalie said, it, I'm hoping that it keeps it invitational so that people feel comfortable coming. Um, there's a lot of apprehension. We've had uh, three sessions here in Colorado now uh, the four sessions on, on Friday, and I'm helping lead that. Um, but I'm hoping, and she's coalescing a group around her that can take it and, and lead it. Um, and so it's, it's been really interesting just to watch and to see what are the, what are the essentials? So, so just to, to finish up here, um, the essentials that I've kind of come down to um, is a welcome, first of all, um, and also trying to define the space, define what it is not, because people come with expectations, right? And, um, and giving them some sort of guidance of what it is so that they're not intimidated or afraid. Um, but they all come willingly and, and telling them that this is a time that they have carved out to meet with their maker and be with him and, and hear from him. 
So that's the first essential. And then um, the second essential is, um, is helping, helping them come out of the world that they've come from and focusing on God, which is, that is worship. Worship is just focusing on God is all it is. So using some of these tools like breath prayer, um, some of the things we've learned, all the, all the things about meditation and um, listening prayer and mindfulness that we're hearing now, it's being hijacked by Eastern um, religions, but was really first taught by Christianity. And we need to get back to that. And it, and it does work. I mean, it helps them. We have a million thoughts going through our brain. So to help anyone slow down and really hear one thought that comes through um, and then to help them understand that it might be from God. And, and we all know that that is a trial and error, right? I mean, it's, it's learning when you obey immediately and then we don't know until after the fact that, oh yeah, that was from God. <laughs> and then you build on that, on that trust. And then you start to learn, oh, I know, I know his voice. I know when he's telling me to do something, when it's aligning in scripture, maybe that you have just read or, um, and we know that process, but there, it, we're not teaching that. We're not teaching that in in our community of believers and there, and the culture is certainly not teaching that and how to listen to God. So, so that's my premise is how we can use art to help people slow down, first of all, and to actually understand what it means to hear from God. So those are some of the tools that we use. And then I always have a devotional, um, after the breath prayer, a lot of, I, I, I try to do like two to three minutes of breath prayer, which is an inhalation of scripture and then an exhalation of scripture is usually a verse. And that really slows people's hearts down. It slows their minds down. Um, they're amazed at how their heart rate can come down. It's amazing when people are trying to get there and they're rushing all around and they, they finally come, you really have to, you have to adjust the atmosphere for for them and in order for them to even hear God. Um, so after that, after that breath prayer, I usually have a, a devotional. Then I, I do a real short explanation on the medium that we're using. I try not to talk a lot um, and that's always my fault, but um, they need an explanation. Sometimes we go in steps. Sometimes it's all explained at the beginning. Um, and then the other two last two um, essentials, uh, it, there's a quiet time where they're able to do their art and spend time thinking about God. And I tell them, um, this is not a social time. It's not a time, if you're talking with your neighbor, then you might be interrupting their conversation with God. There's a social time before and after. Um, and then they need to, uh, there needs to be a reflection piece. So as, and this is all teaching. So as they're doing their art, maybe it is in steps. I often have a writing piece with it where they can just write down notes or write down words that they're getting or write down how they're feeling, um, what they didn't like about it, what they might like about it. And then is the sharing piece. And I didn't have the sharing piece at the beginning um, in 2013, 2013 um, but I have come to realize the last five years or so, it is it is an essential to them hearing from God and learning. So it's it's hearing and then putting, putting it into their heart. And, and that, as you know, it's, it's a, a real um, learning tool when you're speaking something that you're hearing or speaking something that you're learning after you're listening to a lecture to reverbalize it to someone is a, another really good learning tool to put that back into your, um, into your brain and into your heart. And I, I, I left that out at the beginning because I was intimidated and I thought, Oh, I don't want anyone to feel obligated to share. I, I don't want them to feel um, scared. But in the many groups that I've done this, I've taken this out now outside of the church 
and the church's friends and community. Um, it's It's been amazing how when they speak what they've heard, they're even hearing more. And the art itself, it's not self-expression. It's, it's really a time where God can speak through the art to people. So I tell everybody, this is not going to be a piece that is going to hang in the Metropolitan Museum of Art. This is a process. It's not the product. It's about the process. And when people share, um, and then I also let the group in a, in the, in a positive, encouraging way, speak into the person who is sharing's art. Um, it's amazing. It's just amazing to me how the Holy Spirit always shows up and he's always speaking if we slow down to listen. So, so just the last little bit is um, some of the groups that I've taken it to is um, some teenagers. I do, uh, my friend does a retreat for under-resourced uh, teenagers outside of the city of Chicago and also in the city of Chicago. She brings them to Tennessee and I do the art worship workshop. And the we have an art show at the end, but this is always a new medium they've never done before. It's always different. Every year is different. There's a different theme. And um, we have the girls stand up by their artwork and speak as to, which helps in their confidence. It helps in their speaking. There's There's a whole lot of things that they're learning as well as just the art, but it is, um, as you know, art touches the emotions. And so it's a very emotional time where the girls find out things about themselves that they never considered. And they hear things from God about themselves that they never really ever considered. So it's speaking into the girls. The other, another place that I've taken it are the um, clients at Haymarket, which is a an addiction and alcohol uh, abuse center in Chicago. And that's one of my favorite nights of the year is to be with them. They are, they're the addicts, I think are the most creative people in the world. <laughs> and there's something about addiction and creativity. And I'd love to have someone research that. Um, but no matter what instructions you give them on the medium, they always come up with something different. And it's so creative and so interesting. And they, they hear a lot about their journey and, and the journey there. We're not supposed to speak about God in that, even though this was a Catholic based organization that started back in the forties on alcoholism on the streets of Chicago. Now it's, it's morphed into alcoholism and addiction. Um, but every client always speaks about God on their own, how they are able to even um, survive or live and on their journey is how God has taken them through this. So even though I'm not supposed to, I, I speak about God anyway, and I figure they can fire me, but <laughs> I'm not being paid. It's just, a, it, it's the, the reason we're doing it is because it's a piece of art that the clients produce in order to put it on the table of a fundraiser so that the clients have a voice at the fundraiser. And we always have a writing piece with the art to explain to the attendees at the fundraiser um, what the artists learned about um, doing their art. And it's, it's very moving and it's very powerful. So, so <laughs> That's that's pretty much all I've prepared, but I but I really love your input and and even a question: Have you been? Are you involved in a in a group, um, a creative group through your body of believers? Do you think that this is possible? Um, is it possible? Um, I, I'm thinking it's possible to replicate it. I'm I'm kind of at this crossroads because I'm this is the first outside group that I've started um, or helped start, I should say. Um, I don't know what it's going to look like. I I don't. It's a it's a release too. It's because I'm not going to be on campus on that site doing it all the time. So it's letting God take it as as he has already, you know, I, 
let him see it's, it may look different. You know, what are the essentials? What are, um, I don't know what he's going to morph it into. And should I write this down? Should I, how I'm, I'm kind of thinking that I should write some of these things that he's been teaching me down so that others can take it and, and take it to where it should go. So. Can you describe Christy, some of the projects like how are you choosing what the art projects are for a given night and what type of projects are they? Yeah, I've gone through different things. I'm, right now we're in a season of creative prayer. Um, so the last two years we've been doing, going through um, different ancient um, spiritual practices of prayer, basically Thanksgiving, lament, um, praise, and um, the Lord just brings brings the projects or the medium to me. It, it's it's kind of amazing how it happens. But I'll describe some. For instance, in the um, prayer session last December on lament, we did marbling paint and did marbling ornaments. So even though your life is a mess, <laughs> feel you feel like your life is a mess in this season of lament that you might be in the God, God can take that and use it and make something beautiful out of it. Um, so that's kind of the, one of the themes, um, Thanksgiving, we did a felt it, the art of felt. Um, we did, um, we took wool, it's a, it's a kit and we made a bookmark. And so there was a lot of agitation that went on and it was a time of prayer where while they were making this bookmark, they could think about a person they wanted to give that to, um, or if they wanted to keep it, it could be, a it, it turned out to be a prayer of the people they were praying for. And as a bookmark was, it was like flowers in a garden and, um, and a lot of people decided to keep it or in fact one one attendee threw it away because it was falling apart and um i always tell them just keep your art until at least the next morning because it's still speaking to you and it will continue to speak to you and this particular person said well i threw it in the trash because it's all falling apart and then in my morning prayer time with the lord the lord told me the person you were praying for her life is falling apart. And this is an indication of what her life feels like. So she grabbed it out of the out of the trash and she started gluing it all back together um, as a reminder to pray for this particular person. So that's the creative prayer season that we're in right now. But I've done I've done book studies. We did um, culture care by Makoto uh, Fujimura. Um, I broke that into five sessions kind of going through the book um, and different art pieces in that. There was like a line drawing, um, uh, a collage. Um, we've done alcohol ink, um, which is losing control, <laughs> uh, feeling like you're out of control and letting the Holy Spirit do breath prayer and and put your life back together. Um, does that answer? It, does, it, there's so many of them. I mean, we've do, been doing them for, for 11 years, but, um, and it's all on our, I, I've documented all of them and it's all on the website and for ideas. And I've um, written it all out so that people can do it on their own as well, especially during pandemic. That's, that's when I really started doing that is writing the whole lesson so that, and with, with a list of supplies that people can do it on their own. And I've, I've had a lot of people, a lot of views. I I don't have a lot of feedback from people that have done that on their own, but um, mm -hmm. but I've got to put it out there so that people are able to access it. Um, Maker's Space. Um, it's the title. It's the name of your community, right? Maker Space. Mm -hmm. Is there also a dedicated space, um, a place, a room um, that is set up for creativity? 
or is it anywhere you are is your maker space? Yeah. Um, the concept is anywhere you are and anywhere that you set up is your, is your space to meet with your maker. We don't have a dedicated space at church, but, um, there is a room that we always use. Um, and then we've moved the church here in Vail. We've been moving around in different spaces in the church. So it's, it's not necessarily tied to the space. Mm -hmm. It's, it's the concept. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Christy, what are your thoughts on the pros and cons of having a Christian art community in a church building as opposed to outside of the church building? The, the reason, the first reason we have um, had it underneath the, the authority of the church, but which really didn't have a lot of authority um, in it because when in 2013, our church was in between different pastors and it was a little bit of a chaotic time. So the creative group, um, we really had free reign to do things that we wanted to do. And I, I have noticed in my work with different churches that um, the pastors can squish or squash this concept very easily. And they, and a lot of pastors don't like a creative group because it's, it's giving over control to the Holy spirit. So um, this, our group started in this, time of between pastors we kind of had a revolving door of pastors and um so we we were able to use the space in the church we didn't have to rent space um my thoughts on that is that it's a it's a free space usually mm -hmm. when you can get approval um from your pastor and and we had approval because we didn't have a pastor um but my my other thought on that is that um, people who wouldn't normally come into a building or maybe are averse to coming into a building, this gives them an opportunity to do something creative and non-threatening in the church building. And it's an entry point. I look at it as a door. If we can have a lot of doors into the church, maybe by different groups, maybe Alcoholics Anonymous or uh, single moms or, um, all the different groups that we, that we have, that we are trying to minister to the community, maybe a food pantry, um, uh, whatever the community's needs are, that's similar to having a creative group in the church building that, that people could come in. And then after meeting some of the believers that are part of the group as well, they develop relationships and then those relationships bloom and they start to feel comfortable and it's not unusual. All of a sudden, maybe they show up for a worship service, you know, and they start to explore who God is, who is this, who is this God that people are worshiping and um, wanting to bring glory to, you know, in their work. Does that answer your question? Yeah, absolutely. That's really helpful. I had a question. Thank you, Christy. This is great. Um, the reality is everything has to have a fundraising component, has to be supported financially. Are you asking your church to finance this? Or are you getting outside financing? Or do the people who come pay? How are you going about paying for materials and besides your own needs, but, but um, yeah, anytime I've done anything like that, that's been a big issue. And I just wondered how you're dealing with it. Yeah. Thank you for that. That's a, that's an aspect I did want to touch on and I, I had forgotten and that's the financial component and trying to figure that out with this new church and how do they finance it? Does it, come under a ministry of the church. Um, ideally, that would be awesome. That's not how we started. We, um, God is, his resources are immense. And whatever 
I needed. I just happened to have had <laughs> also, but, but, but you need to put a framework around it. And the supplies that we try to use are um, available, readily available, not expensive supplies. Um, and usually artists um, in your group would be able to donate some of those or provide some of the things out of their resources. So that's one way. Um, the second way is to have the church finance it. It's not a major expense because they're, the materials that we're using are not expensive. Um, a third way is to have people donate money if they come. For instance, if it's a project that requires a kit or is a little more expensive, people are very willing to throw in $5 or, you know, a, a couple dollars and, and all of a sudden you've got enough money for the whole group. And the groups are range in my experience from 15 to 20 people. Um, so I've tried not to charge. I don't, I have this pit in my stomach when I see um, art with trying to hear from God or that that charges something. I want to keep it free. I want to keep it where people feel free to come and feel and feel free to bring their neighbors. So I've tried to institute an RSVP program and, uh, and getting people on an email list and getting people to come. So I kind of know who's going to show up. So I know how much supplies I need. Um, and I always need to have extra because there's always people that come at the last minute. Um, so it's reading your community, knowing, and this community here in Vail is a very different community, seeing how that works. And that goes, that goes along with time and place too, trying to figure out a time and place that's so different in every single community that you're working on, working in, um, you know, where, where most people would be able to come. So I don't know if that really answers your question. I'm still trying to figure out those finances. Personally, I've been trying to do my art and sell my art and have my art finance the the group that I started that I that I've been in and um, that's kind of slow and coming. But um, I've written some I've written four children's books over the years of the pandemic and that those are starting to to come in. So so I, it's. It's a combination of all of that. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to think that, and you're right. It is a, it is a piece of it. The financial piece is a piece of it, but we try to keep costs down and there's very creative things that we can do too, like using um, junk to make art <laughs> or um, one session we use, we made crosses from a book, an, another author who wrote making crosses and she walks through nature and is praying and allowing God to show her so she notices what items along her walk to pick up. And we did that. We we um, didn't take the actual walk, but I went out and got and found things to bring in, free things to bring in. And then the group made a cross and coming off of her book. So to answer a question from before, that's kind of the inspiration by books that I read, authors that come across. Um, Heather's book was the was um, the inspiration for one session where she is illustrating the Psalms in her in her drawings and and pen and pencil. And we did do pen and pencil um, or ink. I did ink because I I like to throw people off, and ink is one way because people are so anal and want to have an eraser because <laughs> they think they're going to make a mistake, but using ink, you realize there are no mistakes. You just make it into something else. And um, so Heather's book was an inspiration and I tried to highlight her book and use it as an example. So then we all tried um, to go over Psalm one and two and, mm -hmm. and notice the thoughts or the images that mm -hmm. God was putting into 
our brain and thoughts. And it was beautiful. It, it slowed people down and hopefully it's a tool that people will, could take home. So it's a, it, it was a very inexpensive free tool. And I try to do that too, for even our um, underserved communities um, with the girls, because they don't have access to a lot of expensive art supplies, but it doesn't have to be expensive. Even I taught doodling prayer, just um, with a pen and and uh, paper that the girls can do. They're probably doodling already in their schoolwork or during their classrooms, as we all have during lessons or lectures, and trying to show them that that is a tool that they can use to pray. And when you don't have words anymore, a a color or um, a design can take the place of a prayer mm -hmm. and the Holy Spirit knows what that person needs. If we're just focusing on God and focusing on that person, that design becomes a prayer. Mm -hmm. Christy, I think I'm so glad, Diane, that you brought up the question about like the practical nature of finances. How, how do you make it possible? And one of I think the essential to go back to the word you said, like, what are the essentials? The essential in it is to make it uh, duplicatable, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I love that what you're talking about, these are some things that then the participants can take into their own lives without having to have the expensive art supplies, um, but that continue to bless them on an ongoing basis. So that's really encouraging to me. I have a question. Yes. And, and um, by the way, I agree with you, Natalie. That's that's a good comment. But mm -hmm. um, uh, you're a leader, and it's clear. And uh, ministries, projects rise and fall with leaders. And uh, can you describe, do you have a leadership team? Are there others who are with you? And or is it all dependent on you um, to do that? And and this Zoom room, we have leaders here, mm -hmm. uh, and yet leaders have many many things to do. So I'm I'm just thinking about um, uh, the sus sustainability for the leader. Uh, do you have a team? Yes, I do, and that it that's another essential as far as a. a starting a group, I would, I would say is to begin with a team and begin by prayer, <laughs> having God bring those people that are interested into your life and have that be a team, because it's so difficult to just have it all depend on you and on, on one person. So yes, I have a team it's dwindled, but I do have a team. Um, and they're amazing prayer support, but also they lead, they lead sessions. Um, and we've been doing it in, in our church in Wheaton for, well, Wheaton, Glen Ellen, uh, for 11 years. So they're, they're, un they understand the format. They're, they're used to it. They are available. They feel available. They're not threatened by it. So they can, they can jump in and lead, which is great. I don't, you always wonder if you were to step out of the picture entirely, if it would sustain itself. <laughs> um, and that's, that's really the, up to the Holy spirit. So with this new group, it's, it's coalescing a team, trying to coalesce a team. And we had to do these first three sessions, just getting people interested and understanding what it is and what it is not. And through these three sessions, we had a group of four people who came consistently, even with the various times that we had put, put in place, not knowing what would be the best time for this particular community. Um, so we're in the process now of building that team and building the people that are interested. And, and the Holy Spirit brings them. If he wants it to go, it it goes and it's just identifying the people and allowing the Holy spirit to, to bring them to your attention and noticing who's, who's interesting, interested. 
And that's the whole concept is just helping people, teaching people to notice because we go through life. All of us go through life, not noticing so many things. And we're not noticing what God is, what God is speaking to us, but just not even noticing the people on the bus or not noticing the people on the street. So it's, it's a lesson in noticing and a, and a lesson in, in listening to him and letting him lead, letting him lead you. Does that answer the, that question, Chuck? Yeah, it is. I have another question. And yeah. it's just, um, do you have musicians who are part of your group? We do. We do. Um, I'm not real strong in that area, um, but it is a wonderful area to explore. And it and we in the this group that we're starting here, we have a musician who composes original piano pieces. And one of the next sessions that I'm I won't be involved in, unfortunately, is him playing his original piano piece and having the participants paint it, paint what that sounds like. So that I and that the Holy Spirit totally brought that session together. Um, I didn't have any part in that at all. And I think it's going to be fabulous to experience the emotion of what color, what color sounds like in words, like a Kandinsky painting, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So it'll, that'll be interesting. I mean, we have had a session on painting emotions and what feeling, what colors are are your feelings and a session through that. But this is a new, a new one that um, I'm excited about is bringing music. There's also sessions of singing, of song, of original singing, and just ha having a tape recorder there and just letting the Holy Spirit move your voice. I haven't done that, but, um, but I know people who have done that and and that's a real letting go of control experience. I was just um, going to say that sounds very vulnerable. Very vulnerable. And I and I, I'm not there yet. But um, but I would I would love to be a part of that. You know where someone could lead that. And so really, there you bring up Chuck all these great ideas. There's just so many different directions that you can go in mm -hmm. using all the arts. We did have the drama professor at Wheaton College come and speak and do some one session many years ago um, and do some dramatizations and and had people speak. We've had some dancing sessions. We've had um, using your body as prayer. There's a book on using your body as prayer and going through the Psalms and demonstrating like bowing before the Lord or um, or being open to God's grace and blessings, um, that kind of thing. Just, and that is, that's vulnerability. And a lot of people don't even want to get up and move, but it's a whole nother aspect of using your whole body in worship. Um, yeah. so that's it's just, a, it's introducing that concepts to people that they're not normally introduced to in our culture. Right. Uh, what would you say the ratio is usually or over the years of artists and non-artists, just people who want to engage in creativity in the groups? Um, there's probably more ordinary people mm -hmm. than there are artists. Mm -hmm. So because I really try to identify the artists and encourage the artists to then go further in hearing what God is telling them to do, to use their art, to bring him glory and meeting into this other second group, you know, right. where they can maybe, um, and that's a whole discipling process. Um, I, I'm not, a, I'm not their teacher by any means. I'm an encourager of yeah. them to use their gifts. And I just try to encourage them to either, exhibit if we have an exhibit um or and to participate there's a lot of reticence you know and and people that feel like they're too busy but trying to help people understand that this 
is what the Lord's asking them to do, you know, to take that time. This is important to use your talent to, to bring him glory. Mm-hmm. And we, all, we just get so busy. So that is a discipleship. But to answer your question, it's mainly for the ordinary person to realize that they are creative and they can bring that creativity into their world. So that's my question is as, as artists and your knowledge of, of what God's voice sounds like to you, you know, how could you help teach others how to do that? Can we, as artists, because we have a front row seat on the creativity of God and to know God in his creative facet, which is just overwhelmingly amazing. And how, if we can give people a glimpse of that and to see how creative God is, I mean, our think of how our communities could flourish Yeah, if everyone was using their creativity in every aspect of their life of what their what their life looks like you know how can we tackle some of these problems that we have in communities creatively right um what are some of the things that we could tackle that where we have limited resources um how can how can we figure that figure that out creatively solving problems yeah do we have any other anyone else leave you rita rivo <clears throat> Anybody have any comments or questions? Oh, I'm sorry. I've taken up so much time too. Oh, <laughs> quickly because it's been wonderful. So I didn't even look at the time. So thank you guys. Thank you so much for. Yeah. Any, any input? I or... ask... Yeah. I was going to ask um, one of the things I love about what you're saying and doing is that it has such a broad um, scope of the types of creativity that people are experiencing and and that's the way i would want to do it but the question that comes to mind for me for this network is um those who are here and those who will watch it later we have a large network of people where god has given them a passion for a specific art form so -hmm. could the model be adapted if someone's like well i would be way too intimidated to do something where i have to figure out a painter or sculptor or and something different could it be molded to a subset of creatives where you're inviting people in uh this is a group for writers or not for writers but where we explore creativity through writing or painting or sculpting whatever the passion is that god has given that leader if they're not comfortable branching out into the other forms of art absolutely and and that's where we've had guest artists come in and and teach a lesson on their craft. Now we try to make it really simple, something that they that people can do. But then I'm not the expert, but I have experts come in and do their craft. Like a a writer who was a, a writer for Newsweek um, for years, he led a writing session. Another author who was a writer came in and and led a writing session. And it and it's it's more of like a prompt to allow the participants to do their writing. Um, so they're the expert, but it's not necessarily a class, but it's using your expertise to show your craft or show something that you do and allow people to experiment with that medium and, and do something on their own, something very, really simple. And then if people really get enthused or excited about that particular medium, they can go and pursue lessons. They can go maybe pursue tutoring or um, apprenticeships or whatever, but it's an introduction. It's, it's, I'm not an art teacher, like I said, but I, but I brought in experts or brought in people of their craft. So yes, it's, the hard part is organizing the group and it, and uh, uh, identifying the creatives that are in your midst that have this passion to teach others and then seeing what your resources are in your community. There are people that you know that you could bring in um, to speak on that in that group. And it's just a matter of keeping it short, keeping it simple, keeping it where people can do it. I had a paper maker come in once who um, makes paper from fiber from 
just um, the stuff he finds outside, like, you know, those um, weeds, weeds and stuff that he, that he puts in. And so we, we had a whole session on making paper and, and he took us through the whole process. And um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's just showing, giving people the opportunity to do a free class. Um, and it's not really a class, but it's just an introduction of, of their, of their craft or their passion and showing your passion. That's, that's huge is showing the passion and the talent that God has given you inspires people to see it. Just like I'm so inspired when I hear all of you and your passions and, and how God is directing you specifically and what is coming out of your relationship with him is so inspiring to me. So what if we could bring that to the community of just people who would never take an art class and show them that that that's how God speaks to you and that, and that he does do passion. And it's so exciting to be with a God that's so creative, <laughs> such an adventure. Amen. Yeah. Do we have any questions? Any other like just feedback? I I really appreciate your your minds are so amazing when I hear you guys speak and what you guys are doing. So any feedback is so welcome to me just to hear your thoughts of anything. You must I write this. You must write this. I'm helping you. I've taken a lot of notes. <laughs> this is really good, Christy. Write it. Do you think it's something that people would be interested in 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 starting in starting in their communities and helping their communities flourish? I was just hoping it's a it's a jumping off place of sure. helping our communities be more creative and solving some of these problems. If when the Holy Spirit blows through in his creative wind, anything is possible. And it's so exciting to see to see when, as you know, when we get creatives together, like this session and people start talking, I just get so inspired. And these ideas just start popping in my head all the time. So what if we can start that with people? People have no idea of the creativity and the resources that the Holy Spirit has. Yeah. Amen. Olivia, I know that you've had an art community group for a number of years in Cluj. Um, are there any insights that you would have from your experience uh, with this Romanian group? Because one of the things that is, it's duplicatable, but of course, it looks different everywhere we go mm -hmm. based on, uh, you know, the history and culture of the people too. So I, I wonder what your feedback is. You're, You're muted. Okay. So uh, uh, thank you, Chris, for sharing this. It it is so obvious that the Lord is using you in 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 this amazing uh, realm of creativity which is such an important aspect of, of his attributes, creativity, of his character. The beauty is so important. And uh, I am almost sure that almost uh, all of us are from kind of Protestant churches and uh, the beauty and, and God's beauty in our churches uh, uh, is so neglected. So what you do is uh, pioneering and, and, and very uh, valuable. I can see from the reaction of, uh, of uh, the people in our communities when we come out with something beautiful, mm. whatever it is, because God is there. The beauty is God, God is beautiful. 
and he expresses himself uh, 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 through that. God uh, was very good with us in, in uh, Romania, my country, uh, Cluj Napoca, my town, because from um, uh, a, a long time ago, 96, we keep uh, uh, having meetings and working together, a group of Christian artists, uh, not necessarily Protestants, uh, but we invite whoever wants to come. Uh, the specific of our group is uh, that we try to be professional, professionals. So all of us are uh, have have academic studies, and uh, 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 if this is the first. Uh, requirement to be to be professional second is to to love god so whoever has this tool the the desire to do something excellent that would reflect god just the excellency of the work is an expression of god not necessarily the theme because the quality is a message so we try these two things. So at the end, uh, 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 about my <laughs> little comment here, you are talking and I admire uh, about the materials you are using. Cheap materials, mat uh, things that you find in nature, uh, that uh, kind of art povera, yeah? are uh, that is cheap and accessible and this is excellent and especially for the people that you you address these uh, trainings just to to uh, to create out of nothing out of something cheap now my little comment here is that maybe you can help them get closer to God, searching for expensive materials, gold, copper, nice uh, uh, papers, good brushes. In what way? God asks us, uh, uh, this, which which is so intricate, it's so fantastic. God says, "Try me, and you will see that I'm God." So, even in our, in our Christian life, we can go with the regular prayers, like our daily bread. Give me health because I have a problem here and there, which is good. Art povera, faith povera for everybody. But God says, have courage and try me. This is what I try to, ex to express. Something that we can ourselves, we, we ourselves, we can go closer to God, ask him, him great things. Not only poor materials, poor paintings, poor little sculptures, poor something. Let's try to honor him through our courage. Thank you. <laughs> I totally agree with you. And I have experienced that even in the leadership group that um, are my team by praying for provision and God has answered that. So it isn't just cheap materials, um, but it's also leaning. I think what you're saying is leaning on God for his provision. And, um, and he, he has been so faithful and amazing to how he gives us the ideas and also the provision. And, and also what's 
cheap to maybe me is expensive to someone in the inner city of Chicago um, or an attic. To give someone a canvas that is cheap to me, but to them, it, it's the most beautiful thing because they've never painted on a canvas before. So there's so many different degrees. And I, I totally understand what you're saying. Um, and, and so agree with you because the, ex the, the expensive material um, just shows the, the abundance of God as well. And, and also just his excellence as, as you said, and yes, I think that that it should be our goal towards towards that. And it's it's bringing people from nothing into that realm is what I'm what I'm trying to to do so that they can imagine the life of uh, uh, Israel people in the desert. What a poverty there! Forty years. Same clothes, same sandals. <laughs> but when they got to the temple, there everything was absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. Gold, special wood, acacia, uh, colors, blue, red. It was like heaven. Amazing. It was amazing. It was such a contrast. So who, who gave the plans for the, this meeting tent? God gave to Bezalel and to, to Moses every little details. Make this by gold, by precious stones, uh, excellent clothes, beautiful gold everywhere. You know, it, it was amazing. Now, why I, I why I mentioned that? Because when that poor Jew that was in the desert in sand, you know, in poverty, having what to eat and what to drink, God's provision, but he he has an experience going to the temple, an experience of God of beauty, of great things uh, possible here on earth. And God provided for all of those. Mm -hmm. God provided. So my little uh, touch here was that uh, uh, we can stimulate by God's grace creativity in, in uh, the people uh, around that are interested, but also we can stimulate faith. Mm -hmm. Ask God in this process of creativity, God, let's do something extraordinary, not only little things here and there. And I, I would conclude, uh, you, you mentioned Mako Fujimura, the painter. Uh, I had the joy to be in his studio in New York. And you know, one of his uh, main practice is to use the most expensive materials. And he told me, I search for the most beautiful and expensive materials because I work for God. Thank you, Liviu. Uh, obviously, Christy, thank you. And uh, uh, I Leave you, you have written me uh, a brief email and we're running out of time, but uh, you have asked us to pray for you and an exhibition that's coming up. And if you would just take one minute, not even 90 seconds, one minute, and tell us about this exhibition that's coming up and, and then we can pray and, uh, and maybe we'll be done with, at 10.30. <laughs> I'm, and, sorry. I, and, I'm sorry. And we pray for Christy too. Yeah. I'm sorry if I was talking too much. No. I apologize. No, we appreciate you, Lydia. Oh, yeah, we love you. 
<laughs> you because you love poor people <laughs> with expensive materials. <laughs> God is growing you up into something beautiful. Yeah. So what's coming up, leave you? Uh, dear uh, uh, brothers, uh, maybe exactly on this line of making great things for God and asking him great things, not for the sake of ourselves, but for the sake of his kingdom, for, for the sake of people, then... Uh, uh, I I kept asking the Lord in my calling, my vocation as a sculptor, uh, to to do something important, and He kept doing different amazing things that proved Himself, not not myself. He was using me, and now the last uh, extraordinary door that He opens is that the. Mm -hmm. Uh, the director of the National Art Museum of Romania invited me to make an exhibition. Mm -hmm. He knows me very well. Ev everybody knows me that I am a Christian and I love Jesus Christ and my works uh, uh, express this. But he invited me uh, uh, and uh, today I finished the, uh, the paper he asked me to, to write a paper because it's not him alone to, to give the permission to have an exhibition next year. Uh, but um, uh, I, I um, will send this, uh, this uh, uh, paper and ask them for, for a space. And the idea is to make an exhibition uh, based on the myth uh, of Plato uh, mm. uh, that is uh, the myth of the cave. Mm -hmm. That's very exciting. In uh, 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 The objects will be some of them inside in some rooms in darkness and shadows will be uh, uh, on, on the walls, the shadows of these objects, because the artificial of the artificial light, the, the cave. And then the visitors will get out of the cave in the natural light, under the sun, under the Lord Jesus Christ, that is our sun, and that he penetrates our lives. Because my works are, are those kind of uh, uh, materials that are uh, that have different holes so the light is part of the object so when the visitors will get outside in the sun of the light they will see the light in the frame of my works mm. so the prayer is now that the committee of the national art museum will uh, accept uh, my exhibition. If you want to to uh, join me in this uh, prayer, maybe God's testimony will get there is the top of Romanian culture. We will absolutely uh, pray today, but continue to pray for this, Livia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Well, I think that we will close in prayer. Christy, I am just so very grateful for what you're doing and um, and sharing it with us today. And I, I've i got a whole bunch of notes and ideas. I'm probably going to give you a call next week Great. to chat through some of them. Great. Um, Thank you. For things that we can do both in Europe and here. I mean, it's you you've boiled it down really truly to uh, the essentials and the essentials of sharing uh, God's love through creativity is, it's just more important than ever. So we thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Chuck, I wonder, would you close us in prayer? Sure. Thank you. We're very grateful heavenly father for this morning or evening, wherever we are. And we're grateful for what Christy has shared. Thank Amen. you calling her and using her and uh, those that she's gathered around to help lead and and then all of these creative people for all of these years. 
Uh, Lord, we pray that uh, this work will continue and deepen. And as she also is influencing um, people in Vail uh, to uh, develop a strong uh, makers community, uh, Lord, I pray that this would be a, a, um, a profound success, uh, even understood in the community, and and uh, that um, the beauty, um, the truth, the goodness um, uh, will shine through. Uh, and uh, thank you for her. Thank you for Dave and uh, uh, the blessing that they've been to so many. And thank you for Leave You. And you have used him in special ways with, with his um, creative sculptors that uh, give you glory. And Lord, we do pray that the museum committee will say yes and that uh, Leave You would have uh, maximum freedom uh, to communicate um, what you've put in his heart. And uh, thank you for the excellence that he brings uh, to his craft and and also to um, to your community uh, in Jesus' name. Um, uh, Lord, again, uh, thank you for today and for this session. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you all for your attention and thank you for your input. I really value all of your opinions and your words. Of You're welcome. Praise. Thank you. Next month is Josh is our okay. special guest. And then the following month, May, is Prabhu Guptara uh, coming back with poetry. That's right. Okay, we will see you soon. Thank you, friends. Ciao. Bye.